All right, so this is kind of marking my first AMD build ever. Um, I've never done them before. Now that it gets AMD, I've just never really used them before. Uh, always kind of been an Intel fan. But for, the, for this particular build, I felt that uh, AMD was kind of the best way to go for cost efficiency. Um, the CPU that we're going with is an AMD. I don't know the exact model number off the top of my head. AMD A65400K. Um, it is an APU, actually, instead of a CPU. So it's got some graphics chips or graphics uh, cores in there as well so it'll run really well uh, if we decide to do any just light gaming on the machine uh, it won't have an issue with doing that and we can always add like a R9 in there later if if we decided we wanted to do more um, with the motherboard we stayed with the kind of the cost efficiency we didn't need anything crazy not gonna do not gonna be doing any overclocking um, we want this rig to be really quiet as it is an HTPC um, the motherboard is a Gigabyte F2 A68 HMH uh, again, runs off the AMD platform, obviously. We're sticking with a stock cooler, um, and then we'll probably be using Noctua fans everywhere else. Sticking again with the cost efficiency kind of side of things, uh, we went with an Antec, just basic power supply. It's not uh, modular, just a full regular power supply, only 350 watts. We're not running a graphics card in there, and this chip only takes like 80 watts, uh, if that. So 350 is great. Um, Antec is a phenomenal brand. So, no problems there. With the memory, we went with one DEM of DDR3 Crucial 4GB, uh, 1600 megahertz. Again, nothing crazy. This rig is not going to be doing anything crazy. If we decided we wanted to double that, we could easily go to 8GB uh, by just adding another DEM in there. The keyboard that we're going to be using most often is this BTC. Theoretically, I've never used one of these before, but I felt that uh, it was worth giving it a try. If I don't like it, I'll um, switch to a Logitech, which is one of their wireless all-in-one keyboards. I use one of those on my Simrig, and I really like it. I just wanted something smaller for this particular build. Um, the case is not here yet. That should be here at some point, probably early next week. So um, I'll add that into the video later. The two drives that we're going with is for storage, a Western Digital Black drive. It's a 2TB. Uh, should be a great drive for it. Should be able to store tons of movies uh, and DVR stuff if we decide to do that. But I don't think that we will. I think that we're going to use the X1 platform through the computer, which will be kind of cool. I'll show you guys how to set that up as well. Our boot drive will be a 256 gigabyte uh, Kingston SSD, around 500 megabits uh, read and write, so kind of normal SSD uh, style there. I kind of debated on whether going SSD or not, but I decided that it would probably be best, as uh, to be completely honest, it's one of the best upgrades you can do for a computer, and I got it on sale for like 60 bucks on Amazon. All together, if you didn't include the SSD in here, you could probably get out of this system um, between like 200 and 250 dollars. So a really cheap, um, should be a really effective HTPC. I think it's going to be awesome and uh, and is basically combining several different things. We wanted a cable box for the uh, media room, but didn't want to pay the 10 or 15 bucks a month that Comcast wants. So I mean, you take 10 bucks over a year, that's 120 dollars. Uh, then we also wanted a Raspberry Pi uh, to run Kodi, but that's a hundred bucks right there. So you add in there for a year of usage, just those two things would be two hundred twenty dollars. Whereas this is gonna be a little bit more than that, and we can store movies and all kinds of stuff on it. So we're gonna get to building. Like I said, the case uh, and drives aren't here yet, but they will be. So I will add that into the next part of the video. All right, so this is gonna be a really quick build. Um, we're not really throwing a ton of components in here, but we're gonna start with the CPU here. Uh, first time I've ever installed an AMD CPU, so this should be interesting. If I can figure it out though. Find the arrow. There it is. Such a weird mounting mechanism. Like I said, we're sticking with the uh, stock cooler for now. Um, I have a feeling that it's going to be kind of loud and that we'll want to switch to something else. But uh, for now, to get us up and running, uh, it should work just fine. It already comes pre-installed pre with a uh, thermal pad. So we're good there. I'm just going to lock it down. Maybe. Interesting stock cooler design. It seems to slide a little bit, but I guess that's how I do it. Again, one DEM of Crucial doesn't even have a heatsink on it. 
Um, but there should be plenty of fans going over it to where it shouldn't really matter. So we're just going to line up the slots here. After we pull one of them back, or both of them back, I guess. Okay. And that's it uh, for the hardware installation part. We're just going to plug the fan in and we'll be good to go. I can find the CPU fan header. And system fan. Apparently it's just under system fan. Oh, wait a minute. There we go. CPU fan. So this board actually, which I didn't realize, has uh, three uh, fan headers, one for the CPU and then two other system fan headers, which will be nice to do because we're going to be throwing a couple fans in this case. We want to be able to run really low RPM knock to a fans and not have any issues. Uh, we're going to open up the power supply, hook that up, do a test boot, and as long as we're good, then we'll be ready to wait for everything else, I guess. The case that I'm using is actually coming with a 550 watt power supply, but it is just a junk, random, you know, bundled power supply. So we don't want to use that. Um, we want to go with a reputable brand. It doesn't have to be anything, you know, crazy. And my gaming rig, I've got an AX1200i in there by Corsair, uh, which is a phenomenal power supply. I love it, and it's never let me down. But in something like this, it is really unnecessary. We're not going for looks with this system. Uh, you're not, you know, there's no windows on it. You're not going to have to see the wires. Basically, as long as we can get, you know, some decent cable management to where they're not in the way, uh, it really shouldn't be an issue with it not being a modular power supply. When you're going for really clean cables and there's going to be a window on the side or whatever it may be, I really recommend at least a semi-module, modular, but otherwise, not that big of a deal. This is the bundle of cables you get. We're not going to be using that many of them. We're going to be using the 12 volt or the, uh, sorry, the uh, 24 pin ATX power supply cable. I'm assuming this is probably a 20 plus 4, maybe? Maybe not. Yep, 20 plus 4. Let's see if I can wrap this correctly on my small table here. There we go. This board also only has a 4 pin CPU. Power supplies. It is an MATX board. Again, not that big of an issue. I'm not going to be pushing a lot of power to this CPU. Um, we'll basically let the if I can install this correctly. We'll let the BIOS figure out everything for us. Uh, I, like I said, we're not going to be doing any overclocking. There's just really no reason to do it on a build like this. Because we're not really looking for CPU power. We're more looking for just like speed and usability, which is what the SSD is for. As you can see, there are several SATA and uh, Molex connectors as well, which we will be using eventually once the drives get here. But then we're just going to plug in the uh, CPU power connector here. Of course, I cannot see anything. The last one that I try. There we go. So uh, I'm going to go grab a monitor, and we'll see if it posts. All right, so we're in the media room now. The projector's warming up as we speak. I've got uh, everything plugged in here. Added our power supply power cord and our HDMI output. Turn the power supply on. And we'll just... short that out. And, theoretically, should post. Maybe. Oh, there we go. There we have a post. New bootable device is detected, but uh, looks like everything else is working correctly. Let me go grab the keyboard and we'll see if we can get into BIOS and make sure that all of our RAM and everything is being detected. Alright, so I recognize the keyboard immediately. We're going to see if we can click on it. I don't know what one is click though. Oh, there we go. Alright, so everything is in. Uh, CPU is running at 3.6, which is correct. It's got a boost clock of 3.8 or 9 on there. Um, boot clock is actually running a little slow. We possibly can turn that up a little bit. CPU is idling at 38 degrees, which is about right for a, uh, a stock cooler. Once we get some more airflow to it, it might go down a little bit as well. 